Eric Archer here from Texas Instruments, and today we to talk about cellular respiration with a biology teacher, uh, Jessica Cahoot, for today's Smart Space video lesson. Uh, Jessica, can you tell us a, the unique way that you cover um, cellular respiration? I heard there's something to do with peas. Yeah, we look into germinating peas. Um, a lot of students don't realize that peas go through, or plants, sometimes a misconception is that plants only go through photosynthesis and not cellular respiration. So using plants or peas when talking about cellular respiration really helps students grasp the concept that all cells go through cellular respiration. So oh, let me cool. share. I didn't, I didn't know peas went through uh, cellular respiration either. That's news to me. That's really cool. Awesome. Well, let me share my screen and share with you um, a little bit about how this works. Um, and so I have my students investigate um, how seeds germinate. And I have a little video that I'm gonna show you. And I set up this little Lego contraption in order to videotape this over several days of these seeds that were germinating. So as you're watching, I want you to think of what you notice and wonder about these seeds over, now this is now day three, now day four, what's happening to these seeds. Um, and how they're germinating. So what did you notice and what did you wonder, Eric? <laughs> uh, I, I really like the Lego contraption. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the part about the peas is really interesting. It, it looked like you had a, a, you had a container with, a, it looks like a, like a wet paper towel or something. That is correct. Okay, and then you've got, uh, peas over over uh, several days and it looks like there's they're sprouting a little something there it's kind of weird looking <laughs> it is what is that is, is that like a stem or something or a root or what is that yeah that's the radical it's the root so it's the initial root that comes out and what happens is well the cell the seeds got bigger too um so the seeds got bigger um and these projections started coming out and these little tiny, um, you can hardly see them on some of these, which are little tiny leaves, um, which are the first leaves of the seeds that come out. So what I would have my students and the people watching was think about what's happening here, what's causing these seeds to grow. So what do you remember about growing? What do you need in order to grow? Well, I know uh, for plants you need, um, need water. Mm -hmm. And uh, you usually need some kind of nutrients, uh, and then you need sunlight. Okay. I think that's about it. Is that? Is, well, is, you might need a few things, a few other things, but with seeds, where do you usually find seeds? Uh, in in uh, in fruits or vegetables, like uh, mm -hmm. tomatoes, or like in this case, peas in a you know in in, in a pea pod. Right. Uh, yeah, and inside those seeds, there's going to be lots of sugars. And sugars are really important in this process because those sugars are going to be converted into energy, and energy is going to be used to help these seeds grow. So seeds are also planted in the ground. So you're not going to, these seeds aren't using sunlight because they're going through a process called cellular respiration. And so we're going to do an investigation where we're going to look at the factors that affect the rate of cellular respiration in multicellular organisms like these seeds. And so when we think about factors that these seeds need, when you have a seed, I don't know if you've ever planted a garden, Eric, have you? I've tried. <laughs> well, when you plant a seed, you put it in soil, right? And then you yes. hope it grows. Well, yep. that's the germination process, and there are certain factors that help that process. Um, you, it just, you, if you leave the seed in the bag, it's not going to do anything. So we have to think about what's going to help these seeds germinate. And so I, we're going to do a little investigation virtually. Um, I've already done part of it. And so we're using a carbon dioxide sensor along with a temperature sensor, and I use a PI Inspire CX2. Um, and this lab investigation is through the Science Inspired page as well. There's a link to that here. Um, and so we were looking at three different variables. We're looking at germinating peas at room temperature. We're looking at non-germinating peas, which is gonna be our ne negative control. 
Um, and then we're also looking at germinating peas in a cooler temperature to see how that cold temperature affects the peas from germinating and what, what happens to them when we cool it down. So what do you think is going to happen here, Eric? Well, I know, I know that, um, uh, I know that in cooler temperatures, usually plants don't grow very well, which is, you know, why, you know, spring is always a big deal because plants pop up in the spring because uh, the temperature is warmer. Um, so I'm thinking maybe the cooler temperature group doesn't grow as well. Um, and then you have non-germinating peas, so I assume they're not going to get very far because uh, they lack the ability to, to germinate. Uh, and then germinating peas at room temperature, I would predict compared to the other two, those are going to perform the best in terms of uh, uh, rate of growth, rate of development. All right, well, let's check it out and see. So here is a video that I put together of myself doing the experiment and collecting some data. Um, so it's gonna go by quickly because this, each round takes about five minutes of data collection. So I'm using the magic of TV to speed up the process. So right now the carbon dioxide sensor is in the non-germinating peas. Um, so I switched them out at this point, and now we have the germinating peas in, and we are going to measure the amount of carbon dioxide. And why would we measure the amount of carbon dioxide here? What do you, why do you think the purpose of that is? Because uh, the more CO2 that's produced, it's an indication of the rate of germination. Is that right? right. Well, if it's going through cellular respiration, cellular respiration needs glucose and oxygen and it produces carbon dioxide and water. So if we, it's producing carbon dioxide, we know that it's going through that metabolism, breaking down that sugar and forming that um, ATP and also those byproducts of carbon dioxide and water. And so by measuring the amount of carbon dioxide, we can get an indication of how well the seeds are germinating. And so I've collected this data and now I want to analyze it. And so, what I would do with my students or the people watching is there, I have a TNS file with the data that we can now look at and analyze. And so I really like to have my students understand how to read graphs and interpret graphs. Um, and so this is the data that I collected with the germinating peas, non-germinating peas, and the cold temperature. Um, along with, I measured the room temperature and the temperature in which the peas that were in the cold water. Um, and so my house is fairly warm <laughs> at almost 30 degrees Celsius. Um, but, you know, we like it warm here. Um, and so I have these three lines. Can you predict which one is the germinating, non-germinating, and cold temperature lines? Yeah, I'll take a guess. Um, I think the green one is probably non-germinating because it appears that there's no CO2 being produced. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking that the black line with the little diamonds is the, uh, the peas that are germinating in the, in the cool or the colder water. And then the blue line represents the uh, peas germinating at, at room temperature. Great. Yeah, and so what I want my students to do is to see a visual representation of all this information. So I'm going to hit menu, and then I'm going to send to, and I can send to it a couple of places. I'm going to first send it to a list in spreadsheets, um, and that's going to give me an idea of what's happening here. And in list and spreadsheets, I like to go to the computer view just to kind of get a larger understanding of what's going on. And so I have my different runs. So my run one was the germinating peas. Um, my run two um, was the non-germinating peas. And my run three was the cold temperature. And so what I, you can see here, this is the time, this is the carbon dioxide, um, and this is the temperature. And so we can look at where it started. So the amount of carbon dioxide and compare the three groups between around, start around 1500 um, for uh, the germinating peas, 1400 for um, the non-germinating peas, and 1429. So they're relatively close together, and this is measured in parts per million. And so we can look down a little bit further to see how they change. 
So over um, several, um, now over a minute, um, we're looking at a greater change between the germinating and the non-germinating and a little bit less of the um, colder temperatures. And then from here, I'm gonna go back to the handheld view so it's a little bit easier to navigate. Um, I'm gonna add a document. And I'm gonna add a data and statistics page. And so I wanna graph this information. And I like this, the data and statistics page a little bit better than this page because it's so tiny. Um, and so I'm gonna click on add variable and it's a little overwhelming because we have so many runs, um, but what do you think should be on the X axis from this investigation? Let me actually close this out so it doesn't confuse you. So what would be on X axis for an investigation um, like this? Yeah, I think uh, if I had to guess, I think um, usually an investigation that involves some kind of time um, span, some kind of uh, uh, you know amount of time you have to get through, um, usually is on the x-axis. Uh, okay, so yeah, and we did look at something over time. So I'm gonna put run one time here on the x-axis, and then over on the y-axis, I'm gonna start with our run one carbon dioxide. So we are measuring the amount of carbon dioxide and you get this um, trend line. And so what's happening with this trend line? What is the trend here? Uh, it's going up. It's yeah, it's going, it's going <laughs> up. And so what we can do is we can measure the rate at which it goes up with a rate of change by hitting um, menu, analyze, regression, and adding a linear regression to get our slope, our rate of change. And so with my students, they may forget that part in math class as they enter a science class. So I always like to refresh their memory of what they're looking at with this equation. Mm -hmm. And so this y equals mx plus c, that m, that slope, um, 6.16, one, three, one. What does that mean? Um, it's a number, but what is that value going to tell us about these germinating seeds? Um, and so when I, show an equation like this or students investigate and find an equation like this, I really want to talk about the meaning of that rate of change. So 6.16, what, do you know what that means, Eric? <laughs> I know that uh, in algebra class, you learn about y equals mx plus b is describing basically the, the slope and intercept of a line. Um, and so the, the 6.16 is the, the slope, which is basically the the rate at which the, the variable increases. Right. And so we're looking at increase of carbon dioxide over time. And so those units are really important. Um, and so thinking about how much, car so our, our independent variable carbon dioxide was measured in parts per million, so those units. And then our time was measured in seconds. So we're having an increase because it's a positive slope, a positive rate of change of six parts per million per second. And thinking, and we're gonna look at and compare to our other three. And then we've got our B, which is where we started out. So about 1300 parts per million is where we started out. And I also have um, our coefficient here, which gives us an idea of how close it is to that rate of change. So now I'm going to right click or hit control menu to get an, another Y variable so we can compare. We're gonna add our second one and we have that line already shows up. So now we've got 0.1. So our second run was our non-germinating peas. So was there a difference between our germinating and non-germinating peas? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty big one. Uh, actually, yeah, the uh, the rate of change, the slope in this case, was pretty close to zero. Point one is, is not much at all. Right. Yeah. So it was much, much, very close to zero. Not a lot of change. Not a lot of carbon dioxide was given off. We can then add another y variable and compare our third run of carbon dioxide, and see how that compares. So now this one is about. 2.3 parts per million per second. And um, it's, 
you know, increasing, but not at the same rate as this one. So here we have a six um, parts per million per second versus a two parts per million per second. So we can really um, compare non-germinating cold and the cold weather or cold conditions and warm conditions. Um, and so in this experiment or in this investigation, what was the best, what, what helped the germinating peas the best? Uh, I conclude that temperature um, had a pretty big impact on the, on the uh, rate of germination or the rate of um, respiration rather. Yeah, absolutely. And so now that we have this initial investigation, um, what I want my students to do is to think about how we could investigate a little bit further. So now we understand the basics of some germination, that temperature does have an effect, but what other factors could affect the peas germinating? How could, you know, is it, I used um, my room temperature, which was about 28 degrees Celsius. Um, what if we increased it? Or what if we let the peas germinate longer than 24 hours? Or some other questions like, I use peas, what, are, what about some other, um, other plants or even insects or other living organisms and what their respiration rate and what are those other factors. So something like this um, investigation will hopefully bring other investigations up and it will help students kind of visualize how the factors that affect respiration. And so when we're looking at respiration, we really need to understand what's going on. So understanding that inside that seed, we have that glucose. Um, and that glucose um, needs oxygen in order to fully oxidize those molecules and create that energy of ATP. And then those, the carbon dioxide and water are byproducts, um, and they are released from the cells. Um, and we see that release of carbon dioxide through that sensor. And then the more that glucose is being broken down, the faster that glucose is being broken down, the more carbon dioxide is released. And so thinking, having my students think about other ways we can increase it, can we get it higher than six? Like what can we do to get it higher than six parts per million? How can we really make these seeds germinate in the most effective way? Um, and my students usually have some really great results with this, um, being able to connect those, um, those investigations to understanding the concept of respiration in a very unique way with seeds. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. What I loved most about this, this um, presentation was the fact that you took a real life sort of phenomenon. You, you took uh, peas. Uh, a lot of people probably aren't, you know, didn't realize that cellular respiration happens in germinating seeds before the whole photosynthesis process kicks in because you can't do photosynthesis without the sun, the plant, the seed during the ground. So obviously um, you got to get things kicked off somehow. And so plants use this, uh, this cellular respiration technique like we do <laughs> uh, in, in a way to, to kind of get, get going. And so measuring the rate at car of carbon dioxide is evidence of the rate of cellular respiration. And, and I just love that. I think that's fantastic. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you.